Hello Linux fans, Rob Collins here. I wanted to follow up and do a part two to my first uh, Linux review. I uh, posted a review uh, two days ago and I'm going to continue that um, with KDE Neon 5.7.3. So I'm into it day five. Uh, it's been very stable. Uh, no glitches, no hangups, no uh, you know shutdowns, no surprises. Um, so so far, very impressed. But um, in the first video, I went a little long, so I, you know there are lots of things to cover here, and so I just thought it necessary to do a part two and get into some of the details, some of the s details of the settings, uh, some of the configuration details, uh, and that kind of thing. So let's jump in it. I'll start off with the uh, taskbar, and you'll notice I've got a row of um, icons for various. Uh, applications here and um, that's very easy to set up with KDE uh, you can simply uh, scroll through your menu your menu list and uh, we'll put audacity there right click on the icon and and choose add to panel likewise uh, you could do the same thing and add that to your desktop so we'll go ahead and just add that to the desktop and while we're on that subject of desktop, something that I neglected to show uh, in the first video is you have an option for settings for your desktop. And that option I have enabled now is folder view, which allows for icons, trash can, that kind of thing to be displayed right there on your uh, desktop. You can change that over to just regular desktop mode Click Apply, and, and you'll have a nice, clean desktop. So I wanted to point that out. The other thing that um, that is not evident out of the gate is how do you rearrange your icons. So we'll go ahead and step through that. You right-click your taskbar, select Panel Options, go to Panel Settings, and now you're able to go in and click and drag, left click and drag and place that icon where you like. Simple as that. Um, the other thing that um, I don't use often, I'm coming around to it, uh, being a previous Windows user, it was not something that was, re was really readily available or, or built into the system. Uh, Windows 10 introduced it I may be wrong there, it may have been in Windows 7, I just didn't know it. But uh, that is virtual desktops, which we see icons for here in the taskbar. So to set up your virtual desktops, it's, it's very simple, and there's lots of control. You go into System Settings, and go into Desktop Behavior, and you'll see Virtual Desktops. So we could go in here and add the number so we'll change that to four. You could also uh, change the number of rows. Uh, we'll leave that at two. And something else I never even thought about is the ability to go in and change the name of each virtual desktop. So I went in just playing around, changed it to A and B. I suppose if you use that setup frequently, you could name one desktop you know, media and the other folder uh, and maybe designate where you're putting what so uh, that would be one use case scenario I could imagine we'll go ahead and click apply and now you'll see we have four virtual desktops available something else that I wanted to make sure uh, and point out was something I completely missed and I've been really um, you know messing around with this OS for five days now kind of putting it through, through its paces because uh, I think this will wind up being my daily driver. Um, when you go into all settings and you hover over an icon in uh, any of the settings menus, you'll notice a pop-up. And I never noticed that, but this pop-up will show you not only what is um, in that area if you click on it, um, right out of the gate, it'll show you workspace theme contains four items. 
So there's some real thought that's been put into this. If, if I were a new user, a new Linux user, and this was the first time I'd, ha I'd come to this uh, setting screen, I may be leery about, hey, do I really want to click on this and change something and screw up my system? Um, and so this is nice to give a first time user an idea of what it is you're clicking into. Um, just a nice touch. All right, so we'll go ahead and come out of uh, settings. Uh, actually, we're going to go back into settings. There was one other thing I wanted to point out. So, system settings is something that you may use frequently. Um, you know, maybe you're tweaking, especially when you first install the OS and, and you're getting things set up. <clears throat> so I discovered that you could actually go in and add that to the panel. Uh, well, I'm not going to make a liar. You right click. Let's see. Let me make sure I'm doing this correctly, or maybe it's a blank space. Hmm. I know I did it earlier. Ah, I remember. You click on the bar in the tab. Okay, so this is going to make a liar out of me. I know I did it. And now I'm starting to wonder, I'm wondering how I did it. Maybe you actually have to be in a desktop setting for that to work. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, I know it's possible. I, I was able to add the desktop setting icon. Hmm to the taskbar. And I thought, hey, this is great. This is a setting I use all the time. Uh, and I did it from inside the actual settings. I know I could go here and say add to panel. So voila. But uh, anyway, I did it from inside of the actual settings menu and I thought, wow, that's something I've never seen before. So if you wanted to add it, you could, you could do it the traditional way here of settings right click add to so <clears throat> I wanted to point out just deeper configuration uh, setting up your taskbar virtual desktops which we've covered um, some of the other settings that you, you may not discover right away are things I haven't I've either never noticed in Linux or um, or haven't messed around with KDE long enough to know it was here. And uh, under activities, under the main settings, activities, you go to privacy. And right away you see for all applications. And if you scroll over to the right, you'll see keep history and then clear recent history. So you think about this, they're kind of grayed out here, but if you think about this, we've got a lot of system icons and some of these are applications that were baked into the OS. Some of these are applications that I added. But this gives you control uh, to, to change what's um, being stored and recorded about your activity with any given application or uh, process. So we could choose do not remember or we could choose specific applications. We can also change that time that um, it will keep the history and we can go ahead and clear out the history. Forget the last hour, forget the last two hours, forget everything. Let's just go ahead and forget everything today. We'll click apply. So again, I, I just discovered this and thought, hey, I wonder how many people are not aware that this is here within KDE. Screen locking. <clears throat> Another one that um, I was happy to find. For whatever reason, and I'm sure it's it's just me, but uh, experimenting with other Linux desktops, I've always been frustrated to find, I know there's, there's a lot of control under power settings and things like that, but for the screen lockout, I've always been frustrated trying to find a way to change the screen lockout time uh, in other distros. Well, here in KDE, finding this setting was like, yes, finally someone gets it. So here you're able to uh, change uh, the time for the screen lock. So I've got it bumped here to 30 minutes. We'll take that down 
to 15 and then require password after locking 15 seconds you know you get a phone call and uh, you're chatting and the last thing you want to do is have to turn around and uh, type in your password just to access whatever it was you were working on again maybe you wanted quick access to a file or a folder uh, while you're on the phone so anyway very nice to have this built in um, you can also change your key commands uh, you can change or toggle on and off lock screen on resume and you can change the background so that that's in line with the customization of KDE which is very vast screen edges we'll go ahead and apply that screen edges uh, so you can set up your uh, what occurs uh, in each corner of the screen as you're dragging windows, that kind of thing. So I wanted to get into more of the, uh, the settings part of KDE. And then I saved really what I think is one of the, the best features for last, which is uh, an application built into KDE Plasma 5 called KDE Connect. And this is something that I am so impressed with. So just for those of you who aren't aware, KDE Connect is an app that you can install on your Android device and perhaps it's available for iOS. I'm just not aware if it is. Um, so go to the Play Store, install KDE Connect and it's a simple, very intuitive uh, process to link your phone to your desktop. Uh, once you've stepped through the process, it'll send by the way, let me back up a minute here. You need your phone connected to the same wireless connection that your laptop or PC is connected to. So, once you have that established, once you have the app installed on your phone, you go through the setup process. Um, it will connect to your desktop. You'll see a pop-up that says, um, I think it says, accept connection or um, uh, accept, accept connect, something like that. Anyway, uh, click apply or accept and then your phone will connect to your desktop. So maybe you're saying, okay, big, big deal. I can plug my phone into my laptop. True, you could, but this, this is a system and you see where they're going with this. They have plugins for this that once you see, once you use it and you realize the power behind it, you'll say, wow, Hopefully you'll say, wow, this is cool. I know I did. Uh, so now I've highlighted my phone. Um, lots of the plugins here are configurable. So battery monitor, and we'll see, um, we'll pull that up in a minute and you'll be able to see here, here we go. So I'm discharging 74%. Uh, notifications pop up in this menu as well. and and that's part of what you're seeing here. You can share the clipboard between devices. Um, inhibit screensaver, I'm not sure. I guess when the device is connected, don't go into screensaver mode. Media control, so you can use your phone as a media control to your PC, kind of slick. Notification sync, so when a, uh, a email pops up you actually see that on your desktop you see uh, part of the message you know who it's from same way with a text um, genius I mean just genius and I'm sure that there's some other third-party software that can do this on Linux this is the first time I have seen this kind of uh, communication between phone and desktop on any OS so forgive me but I'm I'm just kind of blown away by how slick this is. Uh, pause media during control or during calls. Uh, you can ping your device. Um, file system, you can share practically everything on your phone and vice versa. So I can right click on a file. Uh, let's go into something here that I don't mind sharing with the rest of the world. Let's see. All right, here we go. So if I wanted to send this photo to my phone, right click, send to LGE via KDE Connect. You just heard the tone there. That's my phone saying, hey, we just received a file from your computer. 
So um, fast, fluid, it's been trouble free so far. Just very impressed. So save that for last because if, if you are debating whether or not to try KDE, um, and if you go ahead and, and give KDE Neon a try, please set this up, check it out for yourself and uh, spread the word because I think they've done a, a great job here. All right, that's it for now. And I, I hope to, um, in my next few videos, I hope to be able to set up a hybrid Dell uh, tablet laptop that I have, a smaller unit for uh, testing out other distros. There's several other distros on the scene uh, that I'd like to try and do reviews on. So until then, uh, we'll catch you later. Thanks.